okay welcome to chemistry classes in this video we have to discuss here separation of mixture separation of mixture filtration distillation chromatography and uh, sublimation this type of different type of different type of separation of technique we have to discuss here okay so we know there are different type of mixture homogeneous mixture and a heterogeneous mixture we discussed in previous video we discussed heterogeneous mixture and homogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture mean different components of mixture do not mix homogeneously that is heterogeneous mixture example for heterogeneous mixture sand in water chalk chalk powder in water heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture different components of mixture mix homogeneously example salt in water sugar in water these are example for homogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture we can separate very easily for example example filtration sieving uh, this type of technique we can use okay heterogeneous mixture we can separate by simple hand picking method sieving filtration simple hand picking method mean we have one heterogeneous mixture we can simply separate with hand some type of mixture we can separate such uh, like this this type of method is called simple and simple hand picking method clear okay after this we have to discuss here filtration i told you heterogeneous mixture uh, example sand in water we can separate by filtration for filtration we will use filter funnel we will use this type of one funnel this is called filter funnel on the top of filter funnel we will keep filter paper filter paper okay and we will put the mixture from the top of the filter funnel all solid will stay over here only liquid will come down the solid which stay on the top it is called the residue residue for example when you put sand in water when you put sand with water uh, on the filter funnel sand will stay over here only water will come down the sand which stay on here the sand or residue the residue which stay over here it is called it uh, the solid which stay over here it is called residue water the liquid state which came down it is called a filtrate this method is called filtration so the special apparatus used for filtration filter funnel filter funnel okay so remember here uh, filter funnel residue and filtrate okay and this is one example for heterogeneous mixture heterogeneous okay next one we have to discuss here separation of colored components from uh, blue or black ink we have blue or black ink from this ink we have to do we have to separate different components of mixture okay so here we have to discuss which are the different procedure to separate different components of colored colored components from ink so for this purpose we have to take we have to take a beaker with water and cover the beaker with a watch glass and put few drops of ink on the watch glass so so see here in this diagram here we have to take a beaker with water and cover the beaker with a watch glass and put few drops of ink on the watch glass then heat water heat water okay do not heat ink directly okay do not heat ink directly we have to keep watch glass over here and heat water in the beaker okay because of this heat uh, ink from watch glass get hot and it start to evaporate okay after stop after finished evaporation from the ink we will stop heating and we will get we will get residue from here we will get residue from the watch glass so here ink is a mixture 
ink is a mixture mixture mean impure substance we discussed in previous video mixture it is impure substance compounds the substance which contain only one type of substance only one type of elements or only one type of compounds these are pure substance but mixtures are impure substance so see here ink it contain different uh, colored components also something evaporated over here so here it is mixture okay so this mixture we can separate by this method take water in a beaker cover a watch glass on the beaker and put few drops of ink on the watch glass and heat water directly do not heat ink directly okay and here <coughs> ink from watch glass will be evaporated after evaporation finished we will stop heating okay then we will obtain residue from the watch glass okay so this is the method to obtain colored components of colored components of ink okay colored components or you can say different dyes from the ink okay we have to discuss here separation of cream from milk how to separate cream from milk okay to separate cream from milk we will use centrifugation centrifugation mean the mixture rotate very fastly okay the mixture rotate rapidly in a particular machine called centrifugation centrifugation uh, machine to separate cream from milk we will use this method centrifugate centrifugation method centrifugation means the mixture rotate very rapidly so we will we can separate cream from milk okay this is the apparatus used to separate cream from milk or this is the apparatus used for centrifugation okay and here mixture rotate very rapidly in this type of machine okay and here application for application for centrifugation here here these are the uh, different uh, application to application in centrifugation to test blood and urine okay diagnostic laboratory using centrifugation to test blood and urine sample okay and another one to separate butter from cream to separate butter from cream also we will use centrifugation also another one this method also used in washing machine washing machine to squeeze out water from wet cloth okay uh, to dry cloth uh, in washing machine we will use this method water uh, cloth will spin rapidly okay so it helps to uh, drain cloths to squeeze out water from wet cloth okay so these are the different applications of centrifugation okay so cream from milk uh butter from cream uh, this type of separation we will use centrifugation centrifugation mean the mixture rotate very fastly and helping to separate cream and milk or solid and uh, liquid we will we can separate this this method okay one we have to discuss here separation of immiscible mixture immiscible mixture or immiscible liquids mean two liquids do not mix each other two liquids do not mix each other such type of liquids are called immiscible liquids this mixture can be separate with help of separating funnel separating funnel you can see here separating funnel okay so this type of funnel we can use to separate immiscible liquid immiscible liquid example oil in water kerosene in water they do not mix each other these are called immiscible liquid okay so take immiscible liquids in separating funnel and shake well then keep it keep it uh, one place okay let it stand undisturbed means keep this in one place and do not disturb do not shake it okay then it form two separate layers two separate layers uh, it, you can see in in this diagram it form two separate layer after that you have to you have to open the stop cock okay then pour out the lower layer 
take out the lower layer of the liquid. This is the method to separate immiscible liquid. To separate immiscible liquid, we will use separating funnel. Okay, separating funnel. And the application for application for uh, this process. This process helps to separate oil and water. This process helps to separate oil and water. Also, this process applicable in extraction of iron. In the extraction of iron, also we will use uh, this type of separation. Okay, separation of immiscible liquid. Okay, extraction of iron and another one, separation of oil and water. Extraction of iron, you will study in higher classes. Okay, during extraction of iron, it form molten iron. Also, it form molten slag. Slag means impure impurities in the iron. So, there will be two separate layers. These two separate layers can be separate, okay, with help of separating funnel because they are immiscible liquid, okay. Next one we have to discuss here, separation of salt from ammonium chloride. Salt and ammonium chloride, how can we separate? We know ammonium chloride, this type of solids are so this type of solid will sublimize here ammonium chloride iodine camphor this type of solid will sublimize sublimize means this type of solid solid directly change to gas without change to liquid state they will directly change to they will directly change to gaseous state solid directly change to gaseous state this process is called sublimation sublimation so we have a mixture which contains salt and ammonium chloride okay so you have here one picture here salt and ammonium chloride we have to take salt and ammonium chloride in a china dish and invert a funnel as shown in the figure invert a funnel on the china dish okay then put some cotton plug on the tail of the uh, filter funnel then heat china dish we know ammonium chloride it will sublimize it will change to vapor very easily and this vapor will condense on the surface of funnel but salt will remain on the china dish by this way we can separate the mixture of salt and ammonium chloride so here i will say once again we have to take the mixture in china dish okay invert a funnel as shown in the figure, invert the funnel. On the tail of the funnel, we have to put some cotton plug. Heat the mixture. Heat the mixture. Okay. Uh, after that, ammonium chloride will sublimize. And uh, after sublimation, we know ammonium chloride will change to vapor. This vapor, ammonium chloride vapor will condense on the surface of, uh, on the surface of, filter funnel it cannot escape outside because the tail of the filter funnel we covered with cotton plug so this vapor do not escape outside it will condense back on the surface of uh, filter funnel but salt will stay on on uh, china dish okay this method can be used to separate salt and ammonium chloride also see here how can you separate salt and iodine how can you separate salt and camphor same process we can use okay okay next one we have to discuss here chromatography next method of separation chromatography chromatography is a method of separation to separate colored mixture colored components or colored mixtures can be separated with help of chromatography chrome chrome means color okay so chromatography used to separate colored mixture for chromatography we will use a special type of paper called chromatographic paper okay also we can do this experiment with the help of normal filter paper so take out a filter paper <coughs> this this is the size of filter paper we will use to chromatography okay 12 around 12 centimeter length and 3 centimeter width take this type of chromatographic paper and lower end 
lower end of this paper we have to draw a line with the pencil okay pencil do not use ink pen because this chromatographic paper we have to insert into water okay when you draw with ink pen and it will it will give you wrong answer because we have to separate colored substance okay so ink it contains colored pigments so there is a chance to get wrong answer that's why we have to draw this baseline with pencil pencil okay after that we have to put we have to put the sample the mixture uh, the sample mixture okay we have to put one drop of sample mixture on the baseline as shown in this figure okay after that we have to insert this chromatographic paper into a beaker which containing water okay we have to make sure that this baseline should be above the surface of water do not insert do not insert baseline and the sample drop into the water it should be above the surface of water okay and you can see here in this video you can see here uh, i will show you one video after this you can see here chromatographic experiment So here in this video you see here this word, uh, this colored components will move upward it moving upward because this is filter paper this water will rise upward through the uh, filter paper and this water helps to separate different components of colors from the sample the sample which contain different components of color and it will separate into different different spots or different uh, pigments okay with the help of this water this process is called this process is called chromatography look here at the end we we have to say this is the result of chromatography we will say chromatogram chromatogram This is the result of chromatographic paper. Imagine our sample which contain two pigment. So we will get here two. We will get here two spot. Imagine our mixture which contain four, four pigments, four different colored pigments. So there will be four spot. Okay. Here this is this is our sample mixture. It contain four pigments. So it form one, two, three four spot and this result is called chromatogram okay so these are the things we have to discuss about chromatographic experiment chromatographic experiment uh, this experiment used to separate colored components colored components and here we have to use a special type of paper called chromatographic paper and here the size of chromatographic paper around 12 centimeter length and and 3 centimeter width and the lower end of this chromatographic paper we have to draw a line with the pencil called baseline 
and put one drop of mixture on the baseline and insert this chromatographic paper into a beaker which containing water okay and this this water will move upward through the chromatographic paper and this water helps to separate different components of mixture okay and this process is called chromatographic experiment this chromatographic experiment applications of chromatographic experiment chromatographic experiment helps to test purity of food and drugs we can check purity of food and drugs with help of chromatography also here uh, we discuss different colors of different colors of colored components from dye dyes dyes mean uh, it contain different colored components we can separate different colored components of dyes with help of chromatography okay pigments from natural colors natural colors which contain which contain different pigments for example chlorophyll chlorophyll it contain natural pigment green pigment we can separate this pigment with help of chromatography Okay, so these are the different applications of chromatograph. Because here separation of miscible liquids. We already discussed separation of immiscible liquid by separating funnel. Okay, next one, separation of miscible liquid. Miscible liquid means two liquids mix each other. For example, acetone in water, ethanol in water. This type of mixture we can separate by uh, uh, this method it is distillation we will use another term distillation to separate miscible liquid there are two different type of distillation distillation means the process by which we will we will separate miscible liquids miscible liquid means two liquids mix each other example alcohol in water acetone in water okay so this type of mixtures are miscible liquids okay so here distillation there are two type of distillation we will discuss simple distillation and fractional distillation simple distillation and fractional distillation these are the two different type of distillation okay so let us see here uh, this is the apparatus used for distillation for distillation we will use a special type of flask round bottom flask bottom part of this flask is round shape that's why we will say a round bottom flask rb flask okay or we can say distillation flask also we can say distillation flask so we will take the mixture in here, uh, in this flask we will take the mixture in round bottom flask okay and we will heat the mixture over here we will heat the mixture here okay after heating mixture we discuss here immiscible liquid mean two or more liquids two or more components so components with the low boiling point will change to vapor component with the low low boiling point it will change to vapor and this vapor will come over here this apparatus is called condenser this apparatus is called condenser okay so after heating the component with a lower boiling point it will change to vapor and this vapor enter in condenser okay in condenser condenser it is a special type of apparatus it used for cooling it used for cooling to cool the vapor okay after cooling this vapor again we can we can change back to this vapor into liquid state okay so liquid acetone or liquid alcohol the component with the low boiling point again it will change to liquid state this way we can separate we can separate miscible liquid so here this is condenser look here this vapor will come here here this is one apparatus inside there is a tube inner tube inside that tube there is vapor outside there is a covering okay through this covering we will pass water this here water in and here water out we will pass water water through the condenser here and water will be outside we will collect water uh, outside here and this water helps to cool vapor inside the condenser
condenser used to cooling we know after heating the system gain energy sometime you have the question where this system gain energy here in rb flask system gain energy because we heat over here where this system losing energy after cooling the system lose energy we cool over here the condenser cooling so here in condenser system losing energy okay so this is also here we will keep thermometer here this is thermometer this thermometer thermometer helps to control temperature we heating over here okay so to control temperature we will we will note the temperature over here in the thermometer for example we have the mixture we have the mixture which contain water and alcohol water and alcohol alcohol will boil at 70 degrees celsius water will boil at 100 degrees celsius so we will heat over here and we will maintain the temperature around 80 degrees celsius around 80 degrees celsius clear so uh, around 80 degrees celsius uh, you know water boil 100 alcohol 70 so at 80 degrees celsius all alcohol changed to vapor but water stay over here at 80 degrees celsius water did not boil it need 100 degrees celsius so water changed uh, alcohol changed to vapor and this alcohol vapor will be condensed by condenser and we can collect alcohol over here this method is called distillation okay so also I told you there are two different type of distillation, simple distillation and fractional distillation. Fractional distillation, fractional distillation means uh, the different components of the mixture, their boiling point very close to each other. Boiling point of different components of mixture very close to each other. So we have to use fractional distillation. Very close to each other means different components uh, different components of mixture their boiling point difference less than 25 Kelvin for example uh, alcohol alcohol and water water will boil um, 100 degrees Celsius alcohol will boil 70 degrees Celsius and water will boil around 100 degrees Celsius so their boiling point difference uh, around 25 Kelvin okay around 25 Kelvin so we can use fractional distillation also another example acetone and water their boiling point difference very close to each other okay their boiling point difference uh, their boiling points are very close to each other not a big difference okay big difference mean uh, different components of mixture their boiling point big difference then we have to use simple distillation simple distillation okay in simple distillation uh, example for simple distillation sea water we want to obtain pure water from sea water so uh, we will heat very strongly water will change to water vapor and pure water we can collect after condensation okay this is this is simple distillation also all impurities will stay on the distillation flask so their boiling point difference much bigger so we have to use simple distillation acetone in water alcohol in water or or you want to separate oxygen and nitrogen from air so we have to liquefy air we have to change gaseous air into liquid state air then we will warm this mixture we can separate oxygen and nitrogen okay liquid air we can separate oxygen and nitrogen their boiling point very close to each other so we have to say it is fractional distillation okay in fractional distillation there is one more apparatus over here okay fractionating column fractionating column you can see in this figure fractionating column also glass beads over there to increase their separation okay 
for simple distillation uh, you can see only this figure you can see only this one there is no uh, fractionating column and glass beads in simple distillation only fractional distillation you can see uh, fractionating column and the glass beads to increase their separation okay next one we have to discuss here separation of different gases from air okay to separate different gases from air we know gas it is uh, air it is gaseous state we have to convert gaseous air into liquid air we have to convert gaseous air into liquid state applying very high pressure and very low temperature reduce temperature and apply apply very high pressure we can change air in gaseous state to air in liquid state look here here when you apply high pressure and very low temperature here oxygen will change to oxygen will change to liquid state very fast minus 183 okay but you have to reduce temperature very low to convert nitrogen into liquid state okay so here first oxygen will change to liquid state then argon then uh, nitrogen this is the order uh, different gas which change to liquid state okay we have to reduce temperature very low to change nitrogen to liquid state after that we have to after that we have to warm this mixture after warming again oxygen will change to uh, gaseous state uh, first oxygen will change to gaseous state first then argon then nitrogen because nitrogen at very low temperature and we have to warm little bit we have to warm more to change to gaseous state so here you remember nitrogen will change to liquid state very la uh, last also nitrogen will change to gaseous state also last okay but oxygen will change to liquid state first also oxygen will change to gaseous state first because of here lower temperature oxygen change to liquid state at lower temperature also we can change to uh, oxygen in gaseous state so here this method is called a fractional distillation fractional distillation why we use here fractional distillation because different components different components of mixture their boiling point close each other not much difference in their boiling point so we have to say there we have to say here this process is fractional distillation fractional distillation okay and also here we have to apply very high pressure and very low temperature then only air gaseous state change to air in liquid state clear okay next one we have to discuss here purification of copper sulfate okay uh, purification of copper sulfate to purify copper sulfate from impure copper sulfate we will use crystallization we will use the method crystallization this is another method to purify sample to purify mixture crystallization see this uh, video I am giving you one video related to uh, crystallization So using this video you can understand 
using this video you can understand here crystallization method okay so here different methods for crystallization here we have to dissolve we have impure copper sulfate okay take out this take this impure copper sulfate and add into water shake well okay and uh, copper sulfate will be dissolved in the water separate or remove undissolved impurities by filtration take out uh, impure copper sulfate sample add into water shake well copper sulfate will be dissolved in water remove undissolved impurities by filtration warm this mixture after after filtration we will get filtrate we will get the mixture which contain dissolved copper sulfate warm this mixture to get saturated solution after warming uh, some water will be evaporate out and we will get saturated solution okay saturated solution we discussed the previous video saturated solution okay so this saturated solution take out this saturated solution and cool this saturated warm solution slowly after that we can see copper sulfate crystals are formed copper sulfate crystals are formed take out the copper sulfate crystals you can take out this by filtration okay so these are the different methods to methods for crystallization okay dissolve impure copper sulfate in water remove remove undissolved copper sulfate by filtration evaporate the mixture uh, evaporate the filtrate to get saturated solution then cool the saturated solution slowly in room temperature and we will we can see crystals of copper sulfate formed in saturated solution take out this copper sulfate crystals by filtration okay and uh, these are the different methods of methods of crystallization next one we have to understand here applications of crystallization what are the different applications here purification of salt from sea water purification of salt from sea water we can purify by crystallization and another application separation separation of alum separation of crystals of alum from impure sample we can separate it by crystallization these are the different applications clear okay next one we have to discuss here uh, purification of water next one we have to discuss here purification of water to purify water there are four different steps to purify water okay first one simple hand picking method simple hand picking method sedimentation filtration chlorination these are the different methods to purify water water kept in a reservoir water kept in a large tank okay it contains solid impurities it contain big solid impurities like stone leaf this can remove by hand by simple hand picking method okay next one sedimentation water which contain after sedimentation again water which contain small impurities we cannot remove by hand picking we cannot re uh, remove by simple hand picking method this type of impurities can be removed by sedimentation sedimentation mean after removing big solid impurities we will add some setting agent we will add some setting agent we will add some chemicals such as aluminium sulfate we will add some chemicals like aluminium sulfate into water then shake well all small impurities will be settled down all small impurities will be settled down okay this method is called this step is sedimentation after sedimentation we have to conduct filtration we will pass water through a sand bed thick sand okay so we will pass uh, water with small impurities through sand bed okay all small impurities will stay on the surface of sand pure water will uh, you can collect pure water uh, from down part of this filter okay we can we will obtain filtrate but all small impurities will stay on the surface of sand 
this method is filtration for filtration we will use a big thick sand because we have much more amount of water we will purify water from river or uh, or uh, large reservoir large tank okay so large quantity of water we have to purify here so we have to use this method after that last step to purify water chlorination we will pass chlorine gas we will pass chlorine gas to uh, after filtration we will pass chlorine gas through the filtrate we will pass chlorine gas this chlorine gas it helps to kill germs and bacteria it helps to kill germs and bacteria that's why we will do here chlorination so these are the different steps to purify water simple hand picking method then sedimentation remember here aluminium sulfate aluminium sulfate used as sedimentation aluminium sulfate used as setting agent okay simple hand picking method sedimentation filtration chlorination okay okay next one we have to discuss here physical change and chemical change okay physical change and chemical change melting boiling freezing sublimation condensation this type of change we discussed in first chapter melting example ice changes to water water changes to water vapor you know ice water water vapor all this case they are chemically not change always they are h2o h2o in liquid state h2o in solid state h2o in gaseous state okay chemically no change only physical state the state of matter changed but chemically no change such type of changes are called physical change physical change mean no new substance formed not a uh, new substance not formed at all okay only the state of matter change such such cha uh, changes are called physical change for example melting of water melting of uh, sorry melting of ice boiling of water freezing of uh, freezing of water always the state of matter change but chemically no change also new substance not forming in physical change okay example here i told you boiling of water melting of ice also cutting of trees you cut trees into small pieces new substance not formed okay there is no states of matter even if you cut tree big piece of wood changes small pieces uh, solid state but state of matter not changing even it is physical change okay before cutting it is wood after cutting also it is wood not new substance formed so it is physical change also you remember here mixtures are formed by physical change mixture for example salt in water you you dissolve salt in water sugar in water so all these are formed by physical change okay mixtures are formed by physical change so physical change mean change by which no new substance formed also no no chemical reaction clear after that we have to remember here we have to discuss here chemical change chemical change mean opposite of physical change chemical change mean new substance formed okay also after chemical reaction chemical composition will be changed for example burning of wood wood after burning it will change to ash and something other new substance are formed so it is chemical change burning of wood burning of paper burning of fuels all these are example for chemical change okay and another thing uh, something reacting with the acid metal react with the acid okay uh, zinc reacted with the acid or calcium reacted with the acid also these are example for chemical change chemical reaction mean new substance will be formed there will be chemical reaction also compounds also pure substance are formed by pure substance are formed by chemical change we discuss uh, mixtures are formed by physical change but 
mixture mean impure substance impure substance are formed by physical change but here uh, pure substance compounds elements these are these are pure substance pure substance are formed by chemical change okay so here we discuss physical change okay physical change mean change there is no uh, there is no chemical composition change also there is no chemical reaction no new substance formed boiling melting freezing cutting of trees these are example for physical change then chemical change chemical change mean new substance will be formed there will be chemical composition change okay pure substance are formed by chemical change okay uh, burning of burning of fuels burning of paper also uh, metals react with the acid these are example for chemical change burning of candle you know candle candle wax it is solid state when you burn this it will melt it will change to liquid liquid state so solid change to liquid state there is physical change there is physical change also it is burning of candle so also there is vapor is formed new substance formed so it is chemical change also so burning of candle both physical change and chemical change next one we have to discuss here classification of substance we can classify substance there are two different types of substance pure substance and impure substance impure substance already we discussed impure substance mean impure substance are mixtures mixtures are impure substance there are three different types of impure substance solution suspension and colloid we discussed more details about this we discussed already impure substance now we have to discuss here pure substance pure substance we can classify there are two different types of pure substance elements and compounds elements and compounds these are different type of pure substance elements means substance which contain only one type of atoms substance which contain not one atom substance which contain only one type of atoms that is that is elements example you take one gold bar imagine this made of gold so only gold atom here so this is element imagine this room contain only oxygen gas so here only oxygen atoms so this is element okay so elements mean only one type of atoms that is element okay next one compound compound mean compound means substance which contain two or more different atoms chemically joined together example water water is a compound there is two different atoms hydrogen and oxygen chemically joined together it is compound it is important to important to say chemically joined together you take one cylinder you just mix hydrogen and oxygen there is no any chemical bond between hydrogen and oxygen just mix hydrogen and oxygen so there is no there is you cannot say it is chemical it, you cannot say it is compound it is mixture hydrogen and oxygen chemically joined together then we have to say it is compound okay so compound mean two or more different atoms chemically joined together it is compound h2o it is compound glucose c6h12o6 carbon hydrogen oxygen different atoms chemically joined together it is compound so this is element and compound elements and compounds are example for pure substance elements again we can classify metal and non metal metals silver gold platinum iron copper these are example for metals non metals carbon sulfur nitrogen oxygen hydrogen this type of elements are non metals so elements you can classify metals and non metals okay you know metals like iron silver gold platinum these are metals metals are very hard they are shiny they are sonorous sonorous mean metals produce sound when you put down metals it produce sound or you 
beat two metals together it to produce sound so you can say it is sonorous metals are metals are sonorous okay metals are shiny metals are good conductor of heat and electricity these are the some properties of metals but generally non metals are poor conductor of electricity and heat except carbon carbon it is good conductor of electricity carbon graphite it is good conductor of electricity but except carbon generally other non metals are poor conductor of electricity okay they are dull they are not shiny they do not produce sound they are not sonorous these are the general properties of metals and non metals we will study more details about this we will study more details about this later okay so here you just understand few properties of metals and non metals i told you compounds and mixture compounds are pure substance compounds are pure substance compounds which contain two or more different elements chemically joined together compounds are formed by chemical reaction compounds are formed by chemical reaction it is uh, also you know it is it is compound for example h2o two hydrogen and one oxygen so they have fixed composition their components must be fixed h2o two hydrogen and oxygen if you put h2o2 it is not water so in compound their different elements are fixed different components of compounds are fixed okay and these compounds are formed by chemical reaction it is pure substance okay different components of compounds you cannot separate by physical method you cannot separate hydrogen and oxygen simple simple physical method like uh, we discuss many method filtration distillation chromatography this type of physical method you cannot separate compound okay these are the things we discussed in compound compounds are compounds are formed by chemical reaction okay and a new substance formed here okay fixed composition here also different constituents we cannot separate by filtration but here mixture mixture it is impure substance mixtures are formed by simple mixing without chemical reaction no new substance formed different components of mixtures can be separate by physical method for example salt in water it is mixture we can separate by evaporation okay new substance not formed okay also here no fixed composition you take you take one glass water put one teaspoon sugar shake well it is mixture also you take one glass water put two teaspoon sugar okay so these are the things we discussed about mixture mixtures are mixtures are formed without chemical reaction by simple mixing no new substance formed okay there is no fixed composition also it can be separated by physical method filtration distillation or this type of method we can use to separate mixture so these are the things we have to discuss over here clear Hi in this video we are going to discuss about chromatography chromatography is a method of separation of colored substance colored substance we can separate with help of chromatography okay the main applications of chromatography chromatography helps to analyze uh, protein carbohydrate also it helps to check purity of food and drugs etc okay and here the basic terms used in chromatographic experiment locating agent chromatogram and chromatographic paper a special type of paper used in chromatographic experiment called chromatographic paper okay the result obtained the result obtained in chromatographic experiment called chromatogram clear so we can go through this experiment look here 
chromatographic experiment experiment see here imagine you have a sample for example you have a drug okay you want to analyze different type of chemicals present in this drug okay or medicine so first we have to crush this drug into fine powder okay then mix this fine powder with a suitable solvent water or alcohol used as a solvent solvent okay and shake well okay then then we have to take chromatographic paper this is chromatographic paper okay so here this length of chromatographic paper around 12 cm and width of chromatographic paper 5 cm and the bottom part of chromatographic paper we will draw a line with a pencil okay and this line is called the base line it is called a baseline here baseline is drawing with a pencil because pencil line do not dissolve in the solvent ink will dissolve pencil line do not dissolve in the solvent that's why we use pencil to draw baseline clear after that here we inserted our sample into solvent and shake well okay this is our sample now from sample we will put a drop over here in baseline okay then we have to conduct chromatographic experiment this is same solvent okay here water or ethanol so water or ethanol is solvent depends on the chemical we choose water or ethanol okay so we will take here solvent water or ethanol then we will keep the chromatographic paper like this okay here the baseline should be baseline should be above the surface of solvent baseline should be above the surface of solvent clear baseline should be above the surface of solvent and in the beginning i told you this is a special type of paper okay so that's why the solvent will be raised upward the solvent move upward through the chromatographic paper and this is our sample drug it consists of different type of chemicals different chemicals have different solubility in solvent depends on the solubility the chemicals will be separated most soluble chemical will be move upward least soluble chemical will be move less okay so this is the sample sample consists of many chemicals most soluble chemical will reach on the top least soluble chemical least soluble chemical will be move less distance finally we will take out this chromatographic paper and we will obtain the result this result is called chromatogram okay the result obtained by chromatographic experiment that is chromatogram chromatogram clear this is the origin origin okay and here the chemicals are moved upward according to their solubility okay this is chromatogram next term you have to remember here locating agent locating agent mean here the chemical the chemical which is sprayed on chromatogram to make the spot visible these spots are not visible in all case some case the spots are not visible to make the spot visible we have to spray some chemicals such type of chemicals are called a locating agent example for locating agent ninhydrin ninhydrin is one locating agent in the analysis of protein in the analysis of protein the spots are not visible to make the spot visible we will add a locating agent called ninhydrin clear So these are the different steps in the experiment. First, drag convert into fine powder, mix with a solvent, put one drop on the baseline, then uh, keep the chromatographic paper in the solvent. The solvent will be moved upward. The most soluble chemical will be moved on the top. Least soluble will be less distance. Take out the chromatogram. Okay. 
and we discuss locating agent ninhydrin okay now we have another term in chromatography r of value r of value r of value mean retardation factor retardation factor look here this is our chromatogram okay this are the different spots formed okay here imagine this is spot a b c we want to find r of value for a b c here to find r of value the equation is distance between this is you know this is baseline this is baseline and this line i told you the solvent will move uh, through the chromatographic paper till a particular level okay this is the solvent level and this is called solvent front solvent front baseline okay so you want to find the r of value for this particle this part okay so you have to find distance between baseline and solvent front imagine this is 10 centimeter and this is 2 centimeter okay so here r of value for a is distance between baseline and spot form distance between baseline and spot formed that is 2 divided by distance between baseline and solvent front this 10 2 by 10 clear use calculator and you will get r of value for r of value for a r of value for b imagine this length is this length is uh, 4 centimeter so r of value for b is 4 divided by 10 4 divided by 10 okay same imagine this distance 6 centimeter okay so r of value 6 by 10 you will get you will get r of value for each particles each spot formed clear <clears throat> look here based on this you have one question you have one question you are given a chromatogram you are given a chromatogram this chromatogram consists of two origin okay this is a this is b here the question is which one is pure substance pure substance which one is mixture pure substance is a because it consists of only one spot which is mixture mixture is b why it is mixture because it consists of two spot okay so b a is pure substance b is mixture another question both A and B consist of how many similar pigment, how many similar spot, one similar spot, they are same level, one spot similar, okay. So, both A and B consist of one similar chemical, clear? Thank you for watching this channel. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for more videos. Thank you.